Louise, welcome to another lesson in this series on investigating geometry. So far we've seen that definitions are an important tool for all types of geometry. Once again, Cindy and Gerard are back with us on our journey of discovery. Hi, what are you two up to today? Hi, hi Louise. Louise. We're just chilling here at school, watching some football. Oh, hi everyone. Hi guys. Football, huh? That gives me an idea. We could use football as an example to learn more about definitions. Different kinds of football are very popular all over the world. But how do you define the game? Since you're watching football, can you give us a definition for the game? I wouldn't know where to start. What do we need for a definition? Maybe if we watch these guys, we could get a good idea. Not a bad idea. Let's leave Cindy and Gerard for a while and see what they come up with. In the meantime, let me explain what we want you to be able to do by the end of this lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to write a good definition for each type of quadrilateral. Wow, that was a great game. And I think it's easy to define football. Football is a game played with a football. End of story. Everybody knows that, Gerard, but it's not just any game played with a football. I suppose you've got a point. I mean, my mates and I play a game with a football at break, but you wouldn't call it football. So we need to describe it a bit more. Like, football needs teams that compete with each other to score goals. But so do games like hockey and netball. You see, although all the facts you gave are correct, you still haven't given us enough to show how football is different from other ball games. So we can say a definition like this has insufficient information. So one of the requirements of a good definition is that there must be sufficient or enough information about what's being defined. If you can find an example of something that meets all the properties in the definition but is still not the thing being defined, then you found a counter example. A good example of a counter example is the game Gerard and his mates play at break time. Although they use a football in their game, they are not playing football. I've got a good definition. How about this? Football is a sport in which two or more teams compete to score goals by kicking or carrying a ball into each other's goals. Hey G, that sounds great. Does sound good, doesn't it? Okay Cindy, why don't you go through that definition step by step and see if it works? Okay, let's see. Football is a sport, nothing wrong with that, in which two or more teams compete. Hang on. You never have more than two football teams in a game. So there's something definitely wrong in that. Well spotted. It looks like a good definition, but you're right, Cindy. You never have more than two teams in a football game. So, Gerard, I'm afraid your information is not strictly correct. Even if the rest of the definition works, as long as one part is wrong, then the whole definition must be discarded as giving incorrect information. So now what other ideas can you come up with? I know. I've got a sports magazine in my bag. Surely that can help us with the definition for football. Let me see. Here's something. It says, Football is the world's most popular group of team games in which two sides compete to carry an oval football across the other team's goal line. Or kick an oval ball or round ball between a pair of goalposts. Well done, G. That's a perfect description. Are you sure about that? It seems accurate enough. 
I can't see anything in it that's wrong. And I can't think of any other game which meets all those requirements that's not football. Try reading it bit by bit the way Cindy did with your other description and see if that tells you anything. Football is the world's most popular group of team games. Hang on, we don't need to know that. I mean, it doesn't matter whether football is popular or not. It's still a game of football. I mean, being popular or not doesn't change the game at all. That's a good point, Gerard. Well done. Even if everyone hated football, it would still be football. In other words, there is actually too much information in this definition. So we can say this definition contains information that is not necessary. So a good definition has to have three requirements. The facts must all be correct, they must be sufficient, and they must all be necessary. At least we're getting closer to a good definition. But where can we get one? Mm, I know. Where? I don't know why I did not think about this before, but it should be in here. Of course. Uh, oh, here it is. Any of various games played with a round or oval ball, usually based on two teams competing to kick, head, carry or otherwise propel the ball into each other's goals, territory, etc. That covers everything. Absolutely. Okay, let's start by checking that all the facts are correct. Let's see, are all the facts correct? With a round or oval ball... Oval. In soccer, we don't choose an oval ball. But in rugby, you do. This definition also includes rugby as a type of football. Okay, I'm happy then with that fact. Let's go on. Two teams competing to kick, head, carry, or otherwise propel the ball into each other's goal. Territory. That's all true. Well, the facts are correct. But what else do we need to make a good definition? So there must be sufficient or enough information given so that it can't describe any game that's not football. Well, I can't think of a game that meets all of these requirements, which is not football. So if there are no counterexamples, the information must be sufficient. OK, we've got two requirements for our description, but what is the third? Is everything necessary? Or can we leave out some facts? Let me see. We need the bit about the ball. And the bit about the two teams competing. Mm. And the bit about the kicking, heading and carrying of the ball. And very important, we need about the goals. I don't think there's anything we can leave out. You're absolutely right. Everything is necessary for it to be a good definition. If we left anything out, then the definition would no longer be sufficient. So all the facts are necessary. Let's recap quickly. What makes this definition good is that all the information is correct, there is enough information, in other words, it's sufficient, and all of the information is necessary. Great stuff, you two. Now let's move on and look at good maths definitions. Here's a definition for an isosceles trapezium. An isosceles trapezium is a quadrilateral with a pair of parallel sides and a pair of opposite equal sides. Do you think this is a good definition? Um, I'm not sure. Could you help us get started? Okay. First, let's list the facts used in the definition. An isosceles trapezium is a quadrilateral that has a pair of parallel sides and a pair of opposite equal sides. Now we need to check all the facts, if they are correct, sufficient or necessary. So let's start with correct. Well, I think it's a quadrilateral. And to be a trapezium, it has to have a pair of parallel sides. And it has to have a pair of opposite equal sides to make it isosceles. Well done. So we can say all the information is correct. 
Great. Now we can move on to check if all the information is sufficient. Um, how do we do that again? Well, if you can find a counterexample, you will show that the information is not sufficient. In other words, is it possible to draw a shape that meets these requirements that is not an isosceles trapezium? I can't think of a counterexample. Look, if you draw a quadrilateral and make one pair of sides parallel like this and one pair of sides equal like this, then it's definitely an isosceles trapezium. But if you draw a trapezium with one pair of sides parallel, the definition doesn't say which pair of opposite sides must be equal. If you make these parallel sides equal as well, it makes the shape a rectangle. Hey, I never thought of that. You've made a rectangle out of the definition. But now that you have opposite sides equal here and here, does the definition allow for that? I've kept to the definition. It has to have a pair of parallel sides. And it has to have a pair of opposite equal sides. This is where there's some debate over what is a good definition. If you're satisfied with this definition, then you must accept that a rectangle fits the definition. This means a rectangle is a specialized form of the isosceles trapezium. But if you want to exclude the rectangle, you have to add to the definition. You would need to make it more specific and say that an isosceles trapezium is a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides and the other pair of opposite sides equal. But let's accept that a rectangle could be a type of isosceles trapezium for now. Then we can say that the information in this definition is sufficient. Now we have to decide if everything in the definition is necessary. Well, we need to know that we've got a quadrilateral with parallel sides, don't we? Sure, and we have to say that it has a pair of opposite equal sides, so we can't leave anything out. Excellent stuff, you two. The definition fills all three requirements. The facts are correct, the definition gives us sufficient or enough information, and all the information is necessary. But you could shorten the first two facts if you wanted to. We know that a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides is simply a trapezium. So our definition could be shortened like this. An isosceles trapezium is a trapezium with one pair of equal sides. But whether we take the shortcut or not, we still have a good definition that meets all three requirements. It's correct, sufficient and necessary. Now it is your turn to make good definitions. Write two different definitions for a rectangle. Discuss them with a partner and decide whether they are good definitions. Quite often, definitions are used in some of your other school subjects. Now you will be able to decide if they are good definitions or not. Let's hope they are.